This video is about how to produce complex figures using for loops. Let's imagine that we've been asked to draw the following figure as the output of our program. Uh, the figure has several different lines of output and each line has kind of a pattern of characters that appears on the line. Uh, the lines have some number of slashes and then some number of stars and then some backslashes. Uh, so that's kind of the general pattern of the contents of each line. Uh, the first line is sort of an exception in that there's no stars here, but you could think of it as uh, following the same pattern but just having zero stars there in the middle. Um, the overall way that we usually approach these kind of problems are we look for the repetition and we try to use nested for loops to capture that repetition. Um, usually what we do is we have an outer for loop that represents each line, so line number one through five here. And then inside of that outer for loop we have some inner for loops that sort of print sideways to print each of the characters on that line. So um, Normally we shouldn't get started right away with just coding this thing, but just to illustrate kind of the general structure of this program, I'll show you in my editor here. I've written a, an empty program file to get started. And basically you just want a for loop that represents each line. So let's say each line goes from, the line goes from one to five. And now here we need to figure out how to print the contents of each line. So we said that each line had some slashes and some stars and then some backslashes. But how many is the tricky thing? Um, if we could figure out a pattern, then perhaps we would be able to write the contents in here. But the problem is that the number of these slashes and stars and backslashes is related to what line we're on. So you don't always print the same number of these things. So we need to figure out what's that relationship. What's the relationship between the line number and the number of characters that we're printing? So it's kind of hard to figure that out just by looking at the output or just by playing in the editor. So our suggestion of how to figure that out is to make a little table that relates the two values. So this table here, what I've done is I've counted out the number of these occurrences of each character and I've written it uh, next to what line we're on. So this is line one, two, three, four, and five here. And what I'm noticing, let's look at these slashes first. I, if I count these out, there are 16 of the slashes here and there are 12 slashes here and eight and four and none of them here. So now the question is, what's the relationship? What's the relationship between 16 and one? and uh, 12 and 2. Well, um, the way to figure that out is first you need to figure out when I change the line by 1, when the line increases by 1, what effect does that have on the number of slashes? Well, you can see that from 16 to 12 it goes down by 4, from 12 to 8 it goes down by 4. So the, the slope, the scale factor connecting the line and the slashes is you take negative 4 times the line that you're on. Right? Each time the line goes up, one the slashes goes down four. So if if you just think about that expression, negative four times line, on line one you would get negative four slashes, on line two you would get negative eight slashes. That's not quite right. Um, but this isn't so far off because all of these numbers are simply um, off by a fixed amount. So if you look at if you want this negative four to be a 16 slashes and negative eight to be 12 slashes, the adjustment that you have to make to get these numbers into those numbers is that you have to add 20 to each of them. Negative four plus 20 makes 16. Negative eight plus 20 makes 12. Um, and uh, so on. So you can do that for all five of these values here. Negative 12 plus 20 makes eight and that would give us the sequence of numbers that we're looking for. So this expression here is a really key insight that we're gaining from this table. Um, that's the number of slashes that I print as a function of the line number that we're on. So where we use that in our code is basically what I want to say is whatever line I'm on I want to print negative uh, four times that line number plus 20 slashes. So how do I print that many slashes? Well, uh, there's no command to do that in one step, but what you can do is you can make a for loop that repeats that many times that prints a single slash. So you'll say, I'll make a for loop that makes a slash from one to um, that value that we just figured out in the table. And inside the for loop, I will print a single slash character. And to illustrate that that's going to do something good, let's come down here and let's say that um, after all those slashes, we're going to drop to the next line of output. We're going to end the line. And let's just compile and run that as it is. 
and you'll see that actually we've already got something pretty useful here. We've got 16 slashes and 12 and 8 and 4 and none here. And so we actually are producing the right number of slashes for this part of the figure. So that's a pretty useful thing we got out of that table there. Uh, let's go back and do the same kind of calculation to figure out how many stars we're going to need. So if you look at the stars here in the table, there are no stars on the first line and 8 stars here and 16 stars here and 20 four here and 32 here. So again, the, the way to connect that number of stars to the line number is to look at the difference in between each adjacent number to figure out the scale, the slope. So from 0 to 8, it goes up by 8. From 8 to 16, it goes up by 8, and so on. So the expression we're going to end up with starts with 8 times the line number. 8 times line number 1 would be 8. 8 times line number 2 would be 16, like this. Um, these numbers aren't quite right. If you want to make this number into that number, if you want to make this number into that number, you just have to decrease them all. You have to decrease each of them by 8. So uh, 8 minus 8 is 0, 16 minus 8 is 8, and now we're talking. Now we've got the right line number, or the right uh, number of stars that we're looking for. So that there, 8 times line minus 8, is the expression that tells how many stars to print. Let's go incorporate that into our code. So here um, we're going to say that we want to print 8 times line minus 8 stars. So that's pretty simple to translate into code using the same idea from the slashes. Let's make a loop that makes a star from 1 to that number. And inside the loop, we'll print a single star. And the last thing we have on each line is these backslash characters. And uh, if you look at the figure that we're trying to produce, um, you'll see that uh, the number of backslashes is the same as the number of forward slashes that we had on the left because of the symmetry of the figure. And so actually we don't need to think very much. We can just copy the same expression from the slashes and use it again for the backslashes. Negative 4 times line plus 20. So actually I'm going to go ahead and copy this for loop here and paste it down here. Uh, the only difference is that I'm going to print backslashes. And of course, as we learned in the previous chapter, if you print a backslash, that's a special character in strings, so we have to escape it with another backslash. And actually, I think that represents the entire program so far. So if I run this thing, there we go. We've got the five lines of the figure um, all printed out with the proper patterns and proper number of characters and everything. Now, uh, a cynic might say, well, I could have just done five println statements to produce this output here. I don't see why I went to all this trouble to use all of these for loops. It seems like it just made the program bigger and more confusing. Well, the idea there is that now that we've captured this repetition, hopefully that would make the program more flexible. So let's talk about how to make this program flexible. In particular, let's talk about how to make it so that the figure can be resized to different scales. So the one that we've already drawn has five lines on it. So let's think of that as being the figure at size 5. But let's try to make it so that it would be easy to make the program draw the same figure at a size of 3 with 3 lines on it, or a size of 6 with 6 lines, or any size. Well, how would we do that? Um, one incorrect way to try to do that would be to just simply look for the number 5, and wherever we see a 5, change it into a 3 or a 6 or something like this. So if you go back to our program here, we've got 5 lines. Maybe we change it into 6 lines, and we see if that'll run. Um, just that way. Well, you'll see that's not going to do it because the patterns of the characters are different when you change the size to 6. And so it kind of looks right for this part, but it really should be wider and this bottom part here just doesn't quite look right. So there's a little bit more that we need to do. What we need to do is look at all these different expressions and see what changes we would need to make to those to make the size 6 figure look right. But we still would like this property here where you could change a single value and have the whole figure resize. So for us to achieve that, we're going to use something called a class constant. A class constant is like a variable, but it's got a couple of important differences. One difference is that the value is global, so you can refer to that, that constant anywhere in your program uh, as opposed to a variable that's limited in scope to a single method of your program. And the second key uh, aspect of a constant is that its value is only set once. It's only set when you declare the value, and nowhere else can the code change the value. So the syntax for a constant, you write the words public static final followed by the sort of normal syntax for a variable declaration, like type name equals value. 
In the case of this particular program, we'd like to make a constant for the size of the figure. So what we do is we go back to the program and up above the main method here, we say we want a public static final integer named, let's call it size. <clears throat> we'll set it to five because that's the size of our figure that we're working with. And now the goal is to go to the rest of our code down here and change the appropriate places to say size uh, so that when we change this value here, all of the code will adapt to that size. So one obvious place we need to do that is here. We need to say that there are this many lines. Whatever the size is, that's how many lines we're going to be printing. But that's not the only change we need to make. As we saw, if we just change this to six, it just didn't quite look right. So we're probably going to need to change the number of slashes and stars and so forth. But how do you figure out how to do that? Well, um, the best way to do it is to look at the figure at a couple different sizes and try to figure out the overall pattern. Um, let's talk about these slashes for a second. So on the five lines of the size five figure, we computed that the number of slashes here that went down from 16 to zero using these numbers, we computed that that expression was negative four times the line plus 20. If you do the same kind of calculation for the size three figure on the right here, you say, well, there are eight slashes and then four and then zero. So how do I map that into an expression? Well, you can use the same kind of table logic we used a moment ago. Um, eight, four, zero, they seem to be going down by four each time. So the expression has something to do with negative four times the line still. Usually these slopes don't change at different constant sizes. Um, so if I just did negative four times the line number, I would get negative four, negative eight, negative 12. How would I convert those numbers into these numbers? How do I make a negative four into an eight? How do I make a 12, negative 12 into a zero? It seems like for each of the three numbers, I have to add 12 to get from that number to the desired number. So the expression at a constant size of three would be this, negative four times line plus 12. Okay, well, the, the key insight there is to look at the two expressions that we figured out and try to guess what the relation is between those expressions and the size. Well, look at the part that's changed. If we have a size of five, we add 20. If we have a size of three, we add 12. And so basically, whatever the size is, we're adding four times that many. Size times four makes 12. Uh, five times four makes 20. So that's how we get our expression. So actually, if we want a general expression that would work for any size, the expression that we're looking for is negative four times the line number plus four times the size. That's the expression that we're going to need to use. So we're going to make a change in our code here that says instead of 20, it says something like four times size. And that's also used here for the number of backslashes, four times size instead of 20. So let's also look at the number of stars. That's another important thing. We have to get the number of stars right for our scaling figure. Well, in the size 5, we had 0, 8, 16, 24, 32 stars. So the expression we computed was 8 times the line uh, minus 8, I believe. And now if we look at the same figure at size 3, well, we have 0 stars, 8 stars, 16 stars. And so it looks like those figures are still shifting by 8 each time. So let's say that that's 8 times the line plus something. Um, eight times line number one would be eight. Eight times line number two would be 16. And line number three would be 24. How do I convert these numbers into these numbers? Well, uh, they're all eight too large, so I'm going to subtract eight. Huh. So the interesting thing there is that actually at size five and size three, the formulas are the same. It doesn't change. You might have thought that this eight would somehow adjust based on the size here, this no minus eight. But it turns out that it doesn't. So not every uh, expression needs to be adjusted when you change this constant. But you should still do this calculation to see whether you should change it or not. So it looks like in our code here, we don't need to adjust this one at all. It should still work. So um, if we compile this program with our new changes and we run it, right now the output's not very exciting. We just get the same output that we had before at size 5. but the the leap of faith here is hopefully if we change this to a different value like three, hopefully the adjustments we made will allow the figure to resize gracefully. And there we go. There's the size three figure. Let's try it at a different size of six. And there's the size six figure. Looks pretty good as well. 
And so this is where the real benefit of the for loops come in, is that now the program is very flexible. By changing a single very small portion of the program, we can produce lots of figures at lots of different sizes. So here's one last figure at size 10 to really drive the point home. There it is. And that's our solution to this program.